So you may know whole organics from uh, the lawn and uh, ornamental industry. We've been uh, a product that's been around for quite some time, uh, at least oh, 15 years or so. Uh, we're newer to agriculture, but this is our second year of sales. We're on a, over 130,000 acres, mostly row crops, corn, soy, wheat. And in the row crop area, you know, what, what people keep telling us, and these are all pictures, by the way, and really all of the pictures in my deck that are of plants like this come unsolicited from customers. So, you know, no one from Holganics, certainly not myself, uh, went to the farm. We did not cherry pick the plants. These all came to us, people showing off what they got when they used our product. And you can see clearly better roots. And we're going to talk about why that's so important. And of course, what we really care about in agriculture is higher yield. And um, so it, it's uh, pretty typical, again, to see better root mass, a healthier plant. You can see the soybean there in the upper left corner. The plant's actually larger. And look at the tap root coming off of it. And of course, all of that leads to, to yield. You know, for me, um, this is great. We can show lots of data and, and we'll show some, um, but I want to know why. And I'm a scientist by training. I actually have a doctorate in molecular biology of all things. And on top of it, I live in Missouri. So you got to show me. So I want to know why a product like this works. What's different about this microbial product than any others? And so for a number of years, I've been talking about microbes and soil health and such. And it's interesting, about five years ago, I had trouble finding anything out there. So I used some of my own slides. And now today, there's a lot of people talking about the importance of microbes, roots, and soil. So I, I have a lot of slides I can choose from. This is one uh, from the Danforth Plant Science Center. I chose it because it's across the street from Monsanto, where I spent my whole first career and retired. And uh, I know this group and it's just top-notch researchers. What they're talking about here is the importance of roots and microbes. So first of all, active, healthy soil has thousands of species, microbial species, like bacteria, fungi, protozoa, et cetera. Now let me stop there for a second thousands of different species. Most, really almost all microbial products on the market today sell one, a couple. The most diverse sell a dozen or two. Bacteria, fungi, maybe a couple of each. But healthy, active soil has thousands of species and has it for a reason, because those species are all doing different things that build soil, cycle nutrients, break down organic matter, build um, soil into something that, that is nourishing to the plant. And it's, it's like a, a, a well-synchronized uh, engine. You can't just change the spark plug and think now you have a machine that's gonna perform better. You need the whole, the whole machine. Um, in a teaspoon of healthy soil, there are billions of individuals. So active soil, is active and functional because of microbial life. And this, so, this is so important to the plants that plants will spend 30% of all their energy. Basically what they, they take from sunlight, water, and fresh air and convert into sugar, they'll take 30% of that sugar and secrete it through the roots to attract and help grow microbes. It, because it gives the plant such a strong return on its investment to have that microbial life in the root zone. And what the microbes do in turn is they will take the nutrients in the soil and they feed the plant. Now, data shows that about half of the fertilizer that's available, whether that's your cover crop, manure you spread, compost, what's already naturally in the soil, or what you're spending money on, doesn't matter. About half of the fertilizer goes to the intended crop, the rest is wasted in the environment. A lot of it just sits there. It's in a chemical form that plant root can't access, or it eventually washes off or evaporates. Microbes consume the nutrients. They consume the sugar the plant root exudes. They also consume the manure, the cover crop, 
the fertilizer, the synthetic or organic that you put down. And that's a good thing because microbes basically live within half an inch of a root. So they're keeping the fertilizer in the root zone, less of it wasted to the environment. And they're constantly cycling the nutrients and releasing the nutrients in a chemical form the plant root can take up. So you can see, if you look at our microbes big benefit, they're at the very bottom reducing the need for synthetic nitrogen fertilizer. That's incredible. It's not that the plant needs less. It's that more of what's there stays in the root zone and goes to the plant. So the microbes make the fertilizer more efficient. They also help fend off plant pests and disease. Like I said, cycle nutrients help protect the plant from environmental stress. And of course, in, tune, in turn, roots feed microbes. Roots also uh, communicate to, uh, with other plants. So actually in one part of a field, an orchard, whatever, if a pathogen or an insect comes in, through the root fungal connectivity in the soil, biochemically signals are sent out that tells plants in another part of the field, hey, there's a, there's a predator, turn on your natural defense response. So all of this in a healthy soil is actually incredibly dynamic. So when we talk about microbes in soil, you know, these are the different kinds. Uh, bacteria are the, the tiniest, they're also the most abundant, all the way to nematodes, which are some of the largest and, and least abundant. And I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail here, but I, I wanna talk about some of the main kinds of microbes so that you can understand why when choosing a microbial product, you go for biological diversity. So first of all, bacteria, probably the most important. They're the workhorses. They do a lot of um, breaking down organic matter, a process called mineralization. It's, a, it's kind of a weird word that says, look, there's nutrients locked up in the soil, in your cover crop, in last year's crop to be debris, whatever. They're totally inaccessible to next year's crop unless a microbe breaks it down to its basic chemical form a plant root can take up. That's mineralization. So bacteria are really good mineralizers. They also solubilize, which means taking in a form the plant root can't access and now making it available, changing its chemical form, many minerals like uh, phosphorus, potassium, iron, et cetera. So bacteria are really important. And we can see, because here I go to that, okay, I'm from Missouri, show me examples of when the microbes uh, in the soil are out of whack, out of balance. So the top picture, fallow corn syndrome, low phosphorus. Now, first of all, if you do a soil test and you look for phosphorus, most soils have plenty of phosphorus, total phosphorus. But if you look at the important little part of that, available phosphorus, that tends to be much, much smaller. And that's the problem here. There's probably plenty of phosphorus in that soil, but what could have happened, for example, microbes need air. And if this ground was flooded, well, after about 48 hours underwater, the microbes that need air, and those are the all the beneficial ones, are gonna start to die off. So there could be plenty of phosphorus there, but there's no microbes to turn that total phosphorus into available phosphorus. So it looks like the plant is deficient, and it is, even though there's plenty of phosphorus just in the wrong form in that ground. Now on the right, <clears throat> yellow corn syndrome is low nitrogen. Now this can be caused by a number of things, but one that can happen is it's when the bacteria diversity or the, the microbial diversity is out of whack. So corn farmers are putting down nitrogen, no doubt about it. There, there could even be plenty of nitrogen in that soil if they do a soil test, but tilling ground with fertilizer and too many bacteria are gonna make those bacteria bloom. And bacteria grow incredibly fast. Bacteria also have a very high nitrogen requirement. So they're, they're hogs. So they tie up the nitrogen and they keep it away from the plant until the other microbes can come in that feed on bacteria and can help release it. So this is an example of why you really need the biodiversity. Putting just bacteria down is not a good thing because we need the, the other uh, predators of bacteria to keep things cycling. 
So now let's move to fungi. And fungi, of course, are, are also phenomenal degraders. So they're great at breaking down um, last year's crop to be debris, compost, cover crops, et cetera. Really important. There are fungi that you can buy like trichoderma that live along the plant root and they eat other microbes. So they help protect against soil-borne diseases. Penicillium, great degraders and cyclers of nutrients. And then mycorrhizae, like in this picture. So the mycorrhizal fungi, you know, depending on the plant, live along the surface or they go inside the plant root, but then they branch out in that really light white feathery material between the roots. That's actually fungal hyphae. And the fungal hyphae are smaller than the tiniest plant root hair, which means the fungus can get between soil particles the plant can't access. So the fungus can find water and nutrients, which it will feed to the plant in exchange for sugars that the plant feeds the fungus. Fungi also help keep the bacteria in check because they, they eat bacteria. Now here's some proof of, of fungi. They really do break down organic matter and release nutrients. Now this particular uh, uh, piece of proof, this is called fairy ring. Uh, this is a golf club that's not far from where I live. Fairy ring is actually a disease, so I'm not promoting the fairy ring fungus or putting diseases out, but it makes my point. The fungus starts in the center, and as the fun fungus spreads in a circle, the leading edge is breaking down thatch, dead roots, grass clippings, and it's releasing those nutrients, especially nitrogen to the grass, so you're getting that greening effect because there's more nutrients. So again, we can see you know, fungi actually do break down organic matter and help feed the plant. Now last we'll talk about protozoa and nematodes. So by the way, uh, you know, nematodes in the lower right corner, some are bad because they'll, they'll eat your plant roots and they're, they're plant pathogens, but others actually are not. They eat other nematodes, they'll also eat insect eggs and bacteria and such. They're actually beneficial and some growers will spend money on those nematodes and add them to their soil. Um, the protozoa, amoeba, and such, uh, like the, the large cell in the middle of this picture, the bacteria are all those little dots all around it. So you can see much larger than bacteria. And they're back, like fungi, they eat bacteria. And they're important because like fungi, remember, bacteria love nitrogen. Fungi and protozoa, have a much, much lower nitrogen requirement. So God designed this so that when the bacteria start to grow on the nutrients in the soil, those nutrients are now released by what eats the bacteria because too much nitrogen is toxic to them. And so protozoa, as the bacteria grow on the nutrients in the soil, are constantly spitting out nitrogen and they spit out ammonia and nitrate. What are the two forms of nitrogen your plant root likes to take up the best? Ammonia and nitrate. So the cycle's complete. So biodiversity is what makes soil work. And you know, look at evidence. This is the Olympia National Forest. Um, only in a Disney movie would a child believe that there's actually fairies that go out and fertilize this. Otherwise we know this is just normal cycling. And look at the biomass that's supported because plants plant roots and soil microbes are feeding each other and helping the environment thrive. So our product, Bio 800 Plus, why it's different. It contains over 800 species of the beneficial aerobic or air-loving bacteria, fungi, protozoa, amoeba, even some beneficial nematodes, all in one product. Happens to be 100% organic, that's just the way we make it. Um, Everything that you may hear that you want in a microbial, nitrogen fixation, mycorrhizae, trichoderma, plant growth promoting bacteria. You see, remember, plants spend a lot of energy to feed microbes. Well, so there are some microbes, the plant growth promoters, that secrete hormones that induce rooting. So they make more home for themselves, but we like that because Rooting is what helps a plant drive yield and health. Um, so all of this that you see here is in our product, phosphor, phosphorus solubilizers, iron, et cetera, et cetera. 
unlike a lot of other products, the Bio 800 Plus is alive. It's active and it's ready to go. It does not require an activation period. We put food sources in the product so that when our live microbes hit your soil, they go to work right away to get established. So every gallon of our product has about a pound of sugar in the form of molasses. We put amino acids, micronutrients like calcium, manganese, iron, uh, kelp and yucca extracts, some humic and fulvic acids. None of these are at levels to supplement the deficiency in your soil. All of them are there to get our live microbes established and working as soon as they hit your ground.